So starting off with the Bioterrorism Act, this came into place after the events of September 11th in the U.S. when our government, FDA, realized we really don't know who's shipping food into the United States, nor do we know who's producing food within the U.S. There was no central registration or database of companies. Shipments would arrive right into our ports, be taken off the ship, put into the port, waiting for FDA to release them. And at that time, you would, FDA would learn what was in the container. So effective in October of 2003, FDA required a registration. Companies were required to register what's called their facility or your, your actual factory or your warehouse. Uh, in addition, they, uh, companies are required to now submit what's called prior notice, which is a notification that you must give to FDA electronically saying, we have a shipment that's coming to the U.S., this is when it will arrive, this is what's in the shipment, etc. And I'll touch on that in a moment. If you were exporting to the U.S. in 2003, you would have had to have registered by that deadline of December 12th. If you are just starting and just planning to export, you'll need to register before your first shipment goes to the U.S. And again, it's registration of a physical location, or what's called a facility, uh, that manufactures, processes, packs, or stores food or beverages. And again, when I say food or beverages, that also includes uh, dietary supplements. So it's not uh, uh, an office, it's not your if you're a broker or a trader, it's a physical location that's producing or warehousing a food product. FDA gives each of the registrants, each location, an 11-digit number. And this applies to both U.S. and foreign companies. So a company in the U.S. must also register. The one difference is foreign companies must also designate what's called a U.S. agent. And the U.S. agent's role is to act as a communications link between FDA and the foreign company. They must be physically present in the U.S. and they must be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to answer any questions that FDA may have of the company exporting the product. The agent, as the word agent implies, is, a, is not a commercial agent, but it's an agent for the purposes of FDA. The agent is answering questions FDA may have as though they are answering for the manufacturer or for the registered firm. Um, FDA also looks to the agent for scheduling inspections. If FDA wants to come to Vietnam to inspect your factory, they will contact your U.S. agent and give them a notification and a letter indicating that they would like to come inspect your factory. Your customer may act as your U.S. agent, again, as long as they're in the U.S., as long as they're available 24-7. Uh, however, keep in mind that if you have more than one customer and you're doing shipments to lots of different customers, FDA is always going to call that one U.S. agent that you've designated in your registration. So if you have a problem with a shipment that you've done to customer number two or three and customer number one has been listed as your U.S. agent, FDA will be calling that customer number one to ask about the shipment that you've sent to customer number three. So you do need to be careful if you have many customers in choosing your agent. We do, obviously, as indicated in our materials. And here, we do act as U.S. agents. We're U.S. agents for about 4,000 uh, food and uh, food companies, food and beverage companies around the world. Um, let's get through this. Registration. Once you're registered, FDA provides just a number. It's an 11-digit number. Uh, we provide, as a company, a certificate indicating the date you've been registered and indicating that your registration as of that date is in good standing. It can be provided to your buyers in the U.S. to verify that you have indeed um, registered. The information that you're given by FDA is actually just an 11-digit number that don't give you any document that you could really present to any customers. Companies should register on their own you are attesting in a registration that all of the information is accurate and complete, 
and doing it for others, uh, registering a factory without their knowledge is not permitted. Uh, each factory needs their own number. So let's say your company has three locations. You would register all three locations if you're producing food or beverages at those three locations for the U.S. Now because brokers, traders, transporters, they don't technically uh, manufacture a product, uh, they are not required to register. Warehouses are required, whether it's a public warehouse or your own private warehouse or warehouses, they are required to register. So you may have three factories and one warehouse, you would register four facilities and have four different numbers. When the regulation came out in 2003, FDA estimated uh, around 420,000 companies around the world would uh, need to register. Uh, as of about two years ago, 367,000 companies have registered. Uh, 216,000 of those are foreign companies. Uh, now to give you an idea uh, how active FDA is because of uh, budgetary and personnel constraints, it's very hard for them to get out. Obviously, you can't possibly inspect that quantity of companies. In their best year, which was in 2007, FDA inspected a little over 1,000 companies outside the United States. So a pretty small number when you figure uh, 216,000 are registered. Give you an idea, some quick numbers here. Vietnam, uh, quite a few companies are registered with FDA. Over 5,000 companies are registered with FDA. And I can tell you from experience, a lot of those are in the seafood sector. Uh, but, you know, you can have some comparisons here. China has 20,000, over 20,000 registered firms. Canada, uh, bordering the U.S., 14,000. But really for Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam has quite a, quite a large number, and that's fairly indicative of, of how active the exports are here. The second section of the regulation, prior notice, uh, requires companies to submit information to FDA in advance of a shipment arriving in the United States. So you have to notify FDA that you have a shipment coming so that they then can decide if they want to inspect that shipment prior to it actually arriving into the port. Prior notice is not an approval. Once you submit the shipping information to FDA, you get back a barcoded confirmation, but that doesn't mean that it's an approval. It doesn't mean FDA will, ins will inspect or won't inspect. All it means is you have told FDA you have a shipment coming and they have acknowledged that you've submitted the information you're required to submit. This barcoded confirmation, uh, you don't have to send it along with your shipping documents. But in the case of sending samples, for example, if you're sending over a, a box with some uh, food samples to the U.S. to a potential buyer or to a trade show, I would strongly recommend you put a copy of the prior notice with the actual package. So before the prior notice regulation existed, as I indicated before, a container would arrive right into the port, maybe even come off the ship, go into a warehouse, and then FDA would be told there's something for them to inspect or to review. With the prior notice, they know far in advance that a shipment is coming, and they can plan their, and use their resources uh, accordingly to uh, inspect or to take samples, uh, because they, again, know in advance what's coming, and they can better screen uh, what's arriving and decide if they are indeed going to inspect. There are time frames, minimum time frames, for uh, filing prior notice. If it's going by air cargo, four hours. If it's coming by sea, eight hours. If it's coming by mail, express carriers, DHL, TNT, FedEx, uh, you should file the prior notice before your shipment departs. Put it with your package. Anyone can file prior notice as long as they have knowledge of the shipment details. 
In order to file it, you'll need to know uh, the name of the manufacturer, their registration number, uh, the port of entry, the estimated time of arrival, the importer's name and address, the quantity of what's in the container, the product code, the FDA code, the harmonized tariff schedule code. So all of that information gets submitted to FDA, then they generate this confirmation. Uh, we offer a service where we do help with prior notice filings. Um, you can do it directly on our website in Vietnamese. Uh, and we will submit the data to FDA on your behalf and we'll return to you the confirmation. And our turnaround time is about 30 minutes. So once you submit that information to us, we'll submit it very quickly and get it back to you. You will need to supply your 11-digit number for your facility. And if you're a trader or a broker and you're buying from other companies, you'll need to find out their number so that you can submit their number along with their name and address when you're submitting the prior notice. 